Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless you. We worship you for this moment. We exalt you for everything we've gone through and bless you for giving us this day, a new day, beautiful, wonderful day. Lord, we ask you will command your blessings upon our lives, upon our homes and our families, even as you have been doing for us in these three past weeks in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you will make our homes a desired place for every one of us, children, parents. We will all desire to be in this home in Jesus' name. And we ask that your love will, throw, will flow through our wives and your love will flow through our husbands so that every child in the home, every husband in the home, every uh, wife in the home will experience this kind of love in Jesus' name. Lord, if we have failed in submitting ourselves to your commandment, making sure that love prevails in the home, Lord, we pray that you'll forgive us and as we move on with our families, Lord, we pray that we'll do our part for the love that is intended to be displayed in the family, O oh Lord, to be seen by every member of the family in Jesus' name. And Lord, we believe as we do that, the whole church will be electrified with love and the love of God will be seen in our faces wherever we go. Thank you, Father, this morning for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We've already spent about three weeks looking at the word of God on marriage. And in these three weeks, the Lord has spoken to us on some other things which... Uh, for so, those of us who weren't here, who did not listen, first of all, we looked at the message on conflict resolution. Conflict resolution. And there, the scripture helped us, and the man of God who spoke to us helped us that there will be misunderstanding, offenses in the marriage, but that should not close the marriage, that should not terminate the marriage. In fact, if you look at this world, we have the teeth and we have the tongue. The tongue and the teeth had been living for so long. And there are times an accident happens and then you see your teeth biting your tongue. But the tongue and the teeth do not utter argue and say, let us depart and separate. They don't do that. Tongue will not sew the teeth that must be removed from the mouth or else I'm not going to do my job anymore. It, does not hap it doesn't happen that way, which means mouth, inside our mouth, the tongue and the teeth have been living. Accident happens and they still move on. The same thing is what God is telling us that in marriage these things will happen yet we still have to move on. Then we looked at communication. In fact communication is the spirit or the life of every marriage. In every marriage where there is no communication there is no life over there and there is no spirit in the in fact when there is no communication in the marriage, it makes you feel that uh, this marriage is dead. And in fact, it's a dead marriage. Where there is no communication, it's just like a symmetry. You see, when you go to the cemetery, this man is in his own chamber, the other woman's own chamber is in own uh, uh, quarters or flat, and they all sleep apart and th they do not talk to themselves. That is a cemetery. If you go to a, ch a, a home, a house, a family, where husband and wife do not say even good morning to themselves, and then they don't discuss on anything, they don't talk to themselves on anything, on any issue, that is a dead marriage, and that is a cemetery. In fact, it makes one or, or both of them feel like strangers living together. But it shouldn't be like that, like that, like that. 
In fact, one, one may say, well, but we text ourselves. Texting isn't enough. We have to make sure that we talk to ourselves. If there is no communication, we cannot reach our goals. And at times, it creates loneliness when there is no communication. And one Anna or both of us may feel not being listened to. And that is not the right attitude that must be seen in a home. And in fact, at times, it feels disrespectful when I'm not being listened to. And this distrust also can come in. If uh, I cannot talk to you and you cannot talk to me, then that is what is going to happen this trust. And then the last one we talked about is the comfort of the spirit. A home that is being ruled by the spirit of the Lord. And uh, I see that most of us have not come to that realization that marriage is an institution that came from God and not man. And if marriage came from God and did not come from man, then we must see it as something that is spiritual. Something that is heavenly, something that is divine, something that is sacred. If you don't understand it that way, that marriage is sacred, is spiritual, it came from God, then you may be saying so many things about it. And in fact, that's why so many of us, we say so many things about marriage. After all, what is it? Is it not just a man and a woman uh, living together? We, so, so, we, we say so many things about it. In fact, uh, we practice it just as the world. And uh, if you practice your marriage just as the world, uh, you go in circles. Uh, it, see, the world, go, the world, I mean the physical world, the earth, goes in circles. And every morning, it comes back to the same spot. If your marriage is patterned after the world, uh, is the same thing is what's going to happen. It will go in circles, in circles, and it will come to the same spot once again and then we pattern our marriages just like our father our mother our parents that's what we do that's what we say because we do not see the spirituality that is in the marriage I will treat my wife just as my father treated his wife or my mother. I will treat my husband just as my mother treated my father. That is patterning your marriage after the world. And that is not what God says it has to be. The reason is that you have not seen marriage as spiritual. See, we don't even want to plan with our wives. We look at our wife, who is she? Is, is it not this inferior somebody? That's, that she has any sense at all? Any wisdom at all to bring to the table? Why must I even sit down, with, talk with her, plan with her? It shouldn't be that way. And that is why this morning the law order will continue to speak to us. So that we will do the right thing and we will have what it takes to have the right marriage. Which means Christ's relationship to the church is not different from your relationship as a man to your wife, as a woman to your husband. That is how you have to see what it, it is in marriage. I'm going to talk to you briefly on three things, but I'm definitely, I know that I'll be able to go uh, uh, as far as two of them, I'm going to talk to you on two of them. Today is for the women, next week since it's Father's Day, it will be our turn. So women, I need you to open your ears and uh, help me to listen to what the Lord has for you. And men too, help me to listen. So you can help your wife, you can help your partner. The first point is the genuine command to husbands and wives. Genuine commands to husbands and wives. The second one, the good-hearted and the clever wife. And the third one will be the goodly and charitable husband. Before I move on, I need to tell you the topic. The topic for discussion that we are looking at this morning is God's desire. Thank you very much. God's desire for the Christian family. 
God's word desire for the Christian family. So let's go to point number one, the genuine command to husbands and wives. This is general to every one of us. It's not just to the wife and it's not just to the husband. And it's not just as the two, the, uh, are the children in the family. This is to every one of us in the family. And specifically at this time, to you as a husband and to you as a wife. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21. I'm reading Ephesians chapter 5 verse number 21. It says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. See, I think so many of us have overlooked this verse of scripture. Because we normally start at verse 22. And we say, wives, submit yourself. But let's go back to 21, verse 21, and look at it. This commandment is not only to the wife. This commandment is not only to the husband. And for us husband who have been thinking that this command is for the wife to submit and that is all, no. Look at it very well. It says, submitting yourselves, yourselves, not just the woman, submitting yourselves, not just the man, but both of us submitting ourselves to each other. So if you have been telling your wife, submit, 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 uh, that is not scriptural. Both of us. It's just that we have in our own part of submission, God talks about it in love. Our own submission that we show in the family is the love that we demonstrate to our wives. And then the wife's love that she shows to the family is her own submission. So God is saying the same thing. You submit, I submit. We will listen and we will hear the word of God and we will do what the Lord requires of us in Jesus' name. Both of us are required to submit. And to submit simply means get out of the way. Get out of the way. You see somebody coming, you stand in the way, you submit. Your submission is you give the person a chance to pass or to do what he or she wants to do. And at times in the family, that is what we need to do. We submit by giving way to the husband. We submit by giving way to the wife. Not only that, when we say submit, it's to look outside of yourself. You don't concentrate on yourself all that much. This is my right. But your submission is telling you, give it up. Give it up and look away from yourself so that there will be joy, there will be peace in the family. Look outside of yourself, I mean look away from yourself and see your spouse. I need it, but look out of yourself, look away from yourself and see your husband. Look away from yourself and see your wife. That is what it means to submit and submit submit. Submit means you swallow your pride. You swallow your arrogance and accommodate your spouse. You swallow anything that will make you flare up and you accommodate your husband. Look at verse 21 again. It tells us that submitting yourself, submitting yourself. And now it says in the fear of of God. Did you see that? In the fear of God. Not as my mother submitted to daddy. No. It is in the fear of God. Not as uncle submitted to auntie or auntie submitted to uncle. But in the fear of God. That is how we are to submit ourselves in the family to ourselves as husbands and wives. Look at verse 24 of this same Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject, therefore, as the church bows, therefore, as the church submits, Therefore, as the church is under, 
Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. This is the practical love of the wife. Her submission to the husband is her practical love. Look at it again in verse 25. Also, I'm looking at what the husband has to do. On the part of the husband, it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. In fact, Paul repeated this in Colossians chapter 3 verse 18. Colossians chapter 3 verse 18, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Take note of what is, what's going on here in Ephesians Paul said, as in the Lord. He is repeating it here again in Colossians, as fit in the Lord. Verse 19, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Be, don't, don't be like a vinegar in their taste. Don't, don't let them feel unloved. Don't let them feel uncared for. Don't let them feel they are not welcome in the home. So the responsibility is for every one of us, husband, wife, we are all to submit. In the case of the wife, loving the husband is through submission. In the case of the husband, submitting to the wife is through his love that he demonstrated unto the family. So make your wife feel at home. Feel at home. And uh, if, if, if there is no compatibility, then there is going to be a problem. There will be no harmony. Incompatible marriages are like fixing round round circle uh, balls into uh, uh, square square boxes and that is not going to be what it has to be but i speak to you this morning that even if your marriage is just like that that you think it's incompatible when christ comes in because you've married you have married whether you married outside of christ married uh, uh, in a shrine married under an idol since you have been joined together marriage is marriage and you cannot return and as such all you need to do is you hand it over to god and god will do whatever he has to do to bring all that is needed to make that marriage a happy marriage for you and for your family. And God will do it for you in Jesus' name. So if we can't understand this, then we're going to have a problem. And the problem is not going to be something that will benefit you and benefit me. That is why in the scriptures, the Bible tells us in Amos chapter 3, verse 3, but even before we go to verse 3, let's start reading from verse 1. In Amos chapter 3 verse 1, he had this word that the Lord had spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Here God is, God is taking Israel as his wife. And he's talking to the whole family. And he's saying that, listen to me. I have something against you. And verse 2 says, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Can you imagine that? I don't know. The Assyrians are there, but I don't know them. The Jebusites are there, but I don't know them. The Egyptians are there, but they are not my wife. You are my wife. You are my family. Now, listen to verse 3. It says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two live together except they be agreed? Can two talk together except they be agreed? Can two sleep together except they be agreed? Can two dine on the same table together except
after they be agreed, can two come together and say, we are making a project together? Will that be possible? Can two build a house, build a home, build a family together, except they be agreed? And can two raise kids together, except they be agreed? Can two come together as business partners and, and, and say, we are building a business. We, we are going on a business journey, on a business trip. Can this, can this, can this be possible? No. The scripture answers no. Can two pilot, pilot a plane at the same time? Except they agree if there is a disagreement between the pilots, there is going to be a catastrophe. And the husband and wife, the, co the pilot and the co-pilot, if they do not agree, the family is going to be in ruin. I pray your family will not be in ruin. And my own family will not be in ruin. And whatever is going on that makes me unhappy, makes my wife unhappy, makes us not agreeable, may the Lord help us to take them out for us in Jesus' name. The Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. So compatibility is important here as we talk about this marriage. Don't say, my husband is too hard. My husband is too rigid. No. God is still able to make things get better for you and even best for you. If you believe in me, say amen. 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 You see, do you know that we put steel inside flesh? Steel, iron. We put them inside flesh. I remember so many years ago, my father in the Lord, my brother, and also my friend. He is Brit he's in Britain now. There was a day he was driving to the fellowship center. He, he, he was on a motorcycle. And then uh, he had an accident. And it was very serious. He had a shoulder dislocation. And when he had that problem, he was taken to the hospital. They did whatever they needed to do. Uh, to cut the long story short, uh, they put iron, steel, inside the shoulder. And as I'm talking now, it's still there. You probably know some people who are working with steel inside them. Steel inside flesh. Compatible. Now flesh and steel are compatibly living together inside a man. Why are you saying that flesh and flesh cannot live together? Why are you saying flesh and bone cannot live together? The Lord will make it for you in Jesus' name. If still inside our flesh, working, living together, I believe flesh and bone, flesh and flesh will be able to live together in Jesus' name. I remember good marriage, good family, good children, a good spouse doesn't happen automatically, accidentally. Both of us must do something to bring it to that point where we want it to be. That we can enjoy the love God has put there. That we can enjoy the, the, the peace that God has put there. And if you do your part and I do my part, we'll be able to make it. And it shall be well with all of us in Jesus' name. I said it shall be well with all of us in Jesus' name. Both must have a desire to want to spend their lives together. And the children that we will have in the family must have that desire to want to spend their life with us until they also find their way into their own homes. And... Uh, that is what God will do for every one of us. I said God will do for every one of us. I move to point number two. So here I have emphasized the need for every one of us to understand that this is for all of us. Point number two. The good hearted and clever wife. The good hearted and clever wife. Look at verse number 22 in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own word, husbands. As unto the Lord, wives, submit yourself 
unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. And I need you to pay attention here. This submission continues as long as this submission it continues as long as one has a husband. If you don't have a husband, that is fine. You're not submitting to anybody. But as long as one has a husband, this submission continues. And secondly, as long as one is in the Lord, as long as one is a Christian, as long as one is a child of God, this submission continues. Did you hear me? The submission continues as long as your husband is there and as long as you are in the law. That is, woman, when you are submitting according to the commandment of the law that wives submit to your own husband, you must forget who your husband is. If you don't forget your husband, the submission will be very difficult. Because your husband may not always do what is right. Your husband may not always talk right. Your husband may not always think right. And your husband may not always behave right. Your husband may say the right thing, may not say the right thing, or act the right way many a time. But remember, remember, your submission is not unto him. It is unto who? Unto the Lord. That's why God is saying, God knows that we human beings at times, uh, we become careless uh, and we do funny things uh, and we misbehave. So God did not say, submit uh, unto your husband as in the family, as in the, no, as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. You are submitting. And your submission is not other because of culture. Uh, you see, in our culture, women must, uh, uh, must, ma, must do this uh, and submit, uh, and therefore, husband, ah, uh, okabo. Uh, that is not why you are submitting to your husband. You are not submitting to your husband because your husband is the breadwinner. And the financier or the financially secured man who secures the family. That is not your reason of submitting to your husband. You are not submitting because your husband is educated, well educated, has all the degrees I mean, displayed on the wall. And you are not submitting because he provides you with all your needs. Whenever you go to him and you ask him anything, he supplies every one of them for you. It's not because of his father salary. Hey, my husband, if you see my husband's salary, ah, it's fat, it's big, oh, that shouldn't be the reason you submit to your husband. And then uh, you should not submit to your husband because of in-laws pressure. Hey, lady, come on here. I hear that uh, you, you, you are cajoling uh, 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 my son. My brother, you push, you push him here, you push him here. Be careful, oh. Be careful. I hear that he, he, even, wa- he even washes you the plate when after eating. My own brother, my own son, washing the plates in the home. If you are not careful, we will beat you. Oh. If you don't know, ask. And in-laws will be putting this pressure on you. And because of this pressure, that's why you are submitting. Ah, let me submit. Oh, if I don't submit, he will leave me. And if he leaves me, you know, we have five children. We have six children. They are about to enter college. In fact, some have already entered. And uh, who will take care of all these children if he leaves? That is not the reason you should submit to your, uh, to your husband. That is not the reason you must submit to your husband. You submit to your husband because it is a commandment. It is a commandment. That is why you are submitting. God has given you that commandment. And you are not submitting because you fear your husband so much. This is the man. Whenever he comes over, hey, wife, come over here. Why is this here? Didn't I tell you before marriage that I don't like things that are put uh, uh, anyhow? 
that this house must be neat. The next time he comes back home, hey wife, why are my clothes still not washed? Why have you not done the, one, the laundry? Why didn't you iron this and that? And uh, he puts fear in you as a wife and as, a, as such, you are like, he submit, if not. And at times he will come and say, I will, I, will, I will divorce, I will leave you. I will run away from you. And because of that, you are submitting. That shouldn't be. This shouldn't be any reason for you to submit. It is a commandment. Your submission to your wife, sorry, to your husband, is a commandment from God Almighty. It is from the highest authority. So, why must I submit? Look at verse 23. Look at verse 23. Why must I submit as a wife? For the husband is the head of the wife. That's your reason. And this reason came from God himself. God gives this command through Paul, the apostle, to us. He says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is, you see the comparison, he's comparing the relationship of the wife and the husband to Christ and the church, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Wives, let me ask you a question. Do you have heads? I mean real hair. Do you have one? You see how that head is very, very important. It's the head that thinks for you. It's the head that plans for you. It's the head that sees for you. <laughs> if you like to remove your eye and see how the world will be funny for you. The, the, the head sees for you. And the, and the head hears for you. And the, the head speaks for you, chew for you, swallow for you, taste food for you, eat for you. That is the head. Does all these things for you. I'm here to see a body walking without a head. Hmm. And one day maybe one of us should appear without a head. And we'll see how many of us will run away. Right? A body without a head. So my sister, you are the body, but always recognize the head is there. Look at verse number 24. Verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In everything. What does everything mean? Everything. Everything. But... Don't forget this. I need to remind you that Paul had already told us in two places in, in this Ephesians and also in Colossians in the Lord. So, in everything has a limit. And the limit is when it's outside of the Lord, when it's against God's commandment, it's ungodly, it's sinful, we cannot submit to that. Does that make sense? So, even though it's saying it's everything, don't let us forget that in the Lord. Now, let's look at the other side that the wife should display prudence, wisdom in the family. To make the family what it ought to be. And in this, I'm reading Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 1. Proverbs 14, verse 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Every wise woman built her house. Then you move to Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, my sister. Therefore, get wisdom, my sister. Therefore, get wisdom, my daughter over there. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Get wisdom. In your family this morning, this is very important to me and to God. 
that as a woman, as a wife, you get wisdom in that family. See, don't try looking for money. Money is good, but money without wisdom. Don't try getting property. Don't try doing everything possible to beautify yourself and make you look great and wonderful before your husband. Don't try wanting to be popular, getting a name. Don't try looking for children, children, male, male, female, female. No, don't try. God will do that part for you. But on your own part, go after wisdom. Go after wisdom. Because money without wisdom will tend to penury. And property without wisdom will be wasted. And popularity without wisdom will will make you proud. And if you are proud, God is against you. And if you want name, name, my name, if a name and that name without wisdom, shame will come upon you. Don't see so many people, they have name, but they have done so much abominable things that shame has come upon them. Seek wisdom. And if it's only children, 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 then, without wisdom, your future is going to be very miserable. Because if you are not taking care of these children in the wisdom of the Lord, they are going to bruise your heart. And I pray none of us will go through that in Jesus' name. And that is why God is telling us this morning that we seek wisdom. Wisdom for what? Wisdom to solve our problems. Wisdom to deal with issues. Wisdom to bring solutions when there are problems, unanswered questions in the home. That is why why we should look for that wisdom. Wisdom is going to help us. So that we don't make trouble. See, we normally say it's the women who make the trouble in the home, in the house. But if we have wisdom, we are not going to be troublemakers in the home. And at times, our questions are laden with, 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 with troubles. Our answers laden with trouble. Our service laden with trouble. And at times, even the things we buy are laden with trouble. Because we buy junks most of the time. Into the house. If we should come to your house, you see how many junks you have in there. And it creates trouble. And at times, even driving creates trouble with us. If you drive and you drive slowly, trouble. You drive fast, trouble. You drive too close, tailgating, trouble. If you give too much uh, interval, why are you, can't you see, why are you you driving so far? They are all moving. That is also trouble. And if you drive and you get closer to the edge too much, that is trouble also. That is why the Bible is telling us that as a woman, to build your house, you have to have this wisdom that we're talking about. Don't be like these women that I want to point out to you. One of them is Zeresh. Zeresh is in Esther. She was the wife of Haman was going to die. Haman was in difficulty. He was going to die. But at least, why shouldn't Haman go to die in peace? Go to die with somebody loving him? him and should go to death with everybody around him kind of uh, disowning him the king his boss disown the queen disown his own people also disown him here comes Haman Haman comes home and gives report to the wife this 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 happened between I and uh, that is my my boss the king and myself Really? Ah. Hmm. If Mordecai being a Jew and you are falling like this, you are gone. Look at that. Was that a good statement that should be told to 
a husband. Yes, we know that what he was doing wasn't right, but shouldn't the wife be a supporter? Should the wife ever kind of open the floodgate on somebody that is already drowning? Should the wife ever fan somebody that is uh, already on fire, putting more fire, more kerosene, more petrol upon him? No, it shouldn't happen that way. I believe the wife should have, should, should have had some words that will help the husband to die in peace. But look at the wife. At the wife. And you, you think it's funny. Here comes your husband from the place of work. And then your husband said this, this, this and that took place between my boss and myself. Ah, you are fired. You are fired. If this really happened, then you are fired. You are not speaking wisely. You should be there for your husband. And at times, it's a court case. And then your, your husband comes back and gives a report that this is what happened at the court. Ah, and you, you, you said all these things before the lawyer? You said all these things before the, uh, the, the judges? Ah, you are imprisoned already. You go to cell. That is not speaking like a wife who is a wise wife. And that is why God is saying, in all thy gettings, get what? Get wisdom. It's, it's important that you get you get this wisdom that we're talking about. At times, your, wife, your husband uh, went for an exam and he comes back and gives you a report. The invigilator wasn't okay at all to me. Wasn't fun to me at all. Too much instructions. In fact, I couldn't finish everything. Ah. The wife responds, you have failed again? In fact, if, if she said you have failed, that would have been enough. But now, you have failed again? Even though the result has not come, the, the woman is already failing the man. Was it an interview? He came back with a report that they asked me this, I answer like this, they asked me this, they, I answer like this. And the wife, instead of saying something encouraging and supportive, oh, I doubt you get this job also. Please let's have wisdom. Let's be like the good women of the Bible. Don't be like Job's wife either. Job's wife said, if that be the case, curse God and die. Are you telling your husband, if that is what is going on, let's leave Christianity. Let's leave the church. Let's, let's go and uh, worship our whatever idol. Or worship ourselves. Please don't let us be that. But it all takes wisdom. Now look at this woman. Manuel's wife. That is Samson's mother. The man said, ah, we've seen an angel, we will die. The wife said, worry. God is not like that. If God should kill us, Will he tell us all these things? It's an encouraging woman. A supportive woman. A wise woman. May our woman be like that in Jesus' name. May my, the wife over there and the, the wife over here, may you be like this woman in Jesus' name. And my, may my own wife be like that in Jesus' name. Ah, you better claim it for your wife. Hallelujah. We will be wise women in Jesus' name. And I'm going to tell you another one that you'll be surprised. And this one I want us to read about her. Be like Jezebel. You are, you are surprised, right? You see, we have been negative to the point that anything about Jezebel is what is evil. And there are some people like that. Any little thing about somebody, everything about him becomes what? Negative. But I'm telling you, be like Jezebel. And I can prove it from the scriptures. That you must be like Jezebel. In 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 2. 
first kings chapter 19 verse number two it says then jezebel sent a messenger unto elijah saying so let the gods do to me and more also if i make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow you know the story Elijah has slaughtered 450 prophets of Baal. And Ahab was like, I am gone. When she heard the story, a wife, Jezebel, heard the story, she came together with the husband and uh, fighting against the man of God. That's the first part. See how supportive she was? But that is not even the, where I'm going. I'm actually going to this one, which is... Uh, Chapter 21. Look at chapter 21, verse number 3. Let's read verse 3 first. Verse 3 first. And uh, Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my father unto thee. Here was a king asking uh, for something from a subject. And look at the response of this man to him. God forbid. God forbid that I to give the inheritance of my father and the man went in pain look at verse 1 and it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel I'm moving to number 4 look at verse 4 and Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased the husband of Jezebel came into the house really really heavy and displeased that is he was sorrowful to the extent that he will not eat for he had said I will not give thee the inheritance of my father and he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and will not eat bread there's verse 5 now Sorry, verse 4. He will not eat bread. Ahab wasn't ready to eat because what he had was too much. Sorrow, pain, anguish to him. Look at verse 5. But, here is the wisdom that I'm talking about. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad, my husband? Why are you so sorrowful, my husband, that thou eatest no bread, that thou would not eat any food? Now, pay attention very well here. Look at some things going on here that makes or made this woman a wise woman. The first thing here is, she found out what was wrong with the, with the husband. Wife, always find out. Your husband came back home for whatever reason. He's not happy. He will not eat. He will not do this. He will not do that. He's lying on the bed. First, find out what's the problem. Don't just take for granted. Oh, that's, that's who he is. He always come back home and just look like that. Especially when I ask for money. That's when he pretend like this. And maybe, you, maybe you've not seen your husband going to the bed and sleeping without even eating. One of your children will come and tell you, Mommy, Mommy, will you, will you turn to, to, to Daddy? This is what is happening. He did not eat his food and he, he also uh, is not talking to anyone. Won't you go on, oh, baby? If he does, you know, I ask, I ask him to give money for something. That's why he is behaving like that. Whenever I ask money to do something, that's how he behaves. And you, you just say something like that. But the man is suffering. The man is in pain because of what somebody has told, told him. And... And, and if you, you will ever go there at all to say anything, you just go there, ah, darling, are you not going to eat? Please, this food that, uh, that I gave to you is even, it's even not a novel. You see, this food, actually, it's my portion because today there wasn't enough food for us. So, it's, it's the portion that I should have taken that I ate half of it and gave you. If you are not going to eat, I'm going to finish everything. 
And the man is suffering. He's in pain because of what he has said. And you are saying all these things. Well, Jezebel will not do that. First, find out. Find out. The second thing here is that she was concerned. Concerned about his meal. Do you? Does it concern you whether your husband eats or not? Does it occur to you? My husband has not eaten today, has not eaten this morning, has not eaten the whole day. Does, is it a concern to you at all? But it was a concern to Jezebel. And that makes her somebody that we should learn from. Also, listen. Listen to your husband. If you read verse number 6, look at verse number 6 of this, very, this same uh, book and chapter which is, where are we reading? First Kings 21, thank you. Verse 6, and he said unto her, take note of that, and he said unto her, look at verse 7 also, which means he said unto her, that is the man, Ahab said unto her, Jezebel, look at verse 7, and Jezebel his wife said unto him, which means they were communicating, they were listening to themselves. Wife, please, listen to your husband. Listen to him. When he's, he's making any case, listen to him. Don't just uh, take for granted he, he, he's, he's making one of those gimmicks. No. Listen to him. Listen to him. Don't just say, eh, ah, we've been hearing all these stories all this while. No. Listen to what he is saying. And then the next thing we are learning from her is her encouragement. Look at verse 7. Her encouragement. I read verse 7. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Does thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread and let thine heart be merry. Do you see that? Encourage I will give thee the vineyard of Nabal, the Jezreelite. She encouraged the husband. And this is what we all need to do as wives. We need to do everything. Don't just say, ah, husband, you have all these places and you want neighbors also. Hmm. Husband, you are too greedy. Don't go tell your husband like that. Husband, you are too covetous. Don't go tell your husband like that. Don't tell your husband you are too wicked. And so we must respond wisely to whatever is going on in the home. And then verse 7, another thing we are learning from her is that she was a help. She was a help to the husband. A help to the husband and we will help our husbands in Jesus name so we see almost everything that a wife should do is going on here we see communication here we see care we see concern we see comfort we see consolation all inside Jezebel in this very passage that we have read may our wives be like that to us in Jesus name may my wife be like that to me in Jesus name and in our wisdom, we must let offenses go. Let go what? Offenses. They are bound to come. We must let them go. Jesus said uh, it's going to be like uh, 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 offenses will be like. Uh, and then uh, Peter said, uh, as uh, they asked, uh, uh, should we forgive all the time? Say, yeah. 70 times what? 70. That is how much? And that is in a day. And so, you are going to mark the offense of your husband. In one day, 70 times 7, 490 times. Which means that will be your full-time job. You have to have a, a real full-time job to be doing that. What is Jesus saying? Let go offenses. Let go offenses. Offenses. And in our wisdom, we must also accommodate, accommodate in-laws, accommodate uh, friends that come home 
uh, which your wife, with your husband, rather, accommodate them. And then manage the home in wisdom. Manage the home. Organize the home. Spend the money prudently. And as you are spending, have the future in mind. You must have the future in mind as you spend. Don't be a wasteful wife. This is part of your wisdom. And then steady your husband. What did I say? No, I want to hear only the women. Steady your husband. Steady your who? Your husband. Don't just say, ah, I know my husband. I know my husband. We have, we have been married for 30 what years, 20 what years, uh, 10 years. No. Every day there is something to study about your husband. See, yesterday was our anniversary. <laughs> but we, didn't, we couldn't enjoy it. Because activities, activities. We will find time to enjoy it. Amen? I said we will find time to enjoy it. There will be peace in home in Jesus' name. There will be love in home in Jesus' name. Steady your husband. We study psychology. We study anatomy and physiology. We study chemistry one, chemistry two. Do we have chemistry 3? <laughs> I don't know. But, but we study all of that. We study, we study all these. We study Bible. We study, uh, uh, we study how to pray. We study this and that. Please. Yeah. Sociology too. We study all that. Please. Also study your word your husband. And uh, I will be asking for a report. Rajo, you didn't hear this. But I believe our uh, sister uh, promised her that. I said the wives must be studying us. You, you have the fresh marriage among us. So you have not studied at all. Sister promise, you have not studied anything. Huh? So it's not only psychology, physiology, uh, 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 anatomy and physiology and uh, what else? These are not only things we will study. We will study our husband. We will study our husband. What, 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 does he, what does he want? What does he like? What is it that makes him happy? What is it that uh, energizes him, makes him bold and courageous? We have to steady our husband. And at times we even, we even, at times we even study uh, cooking. Huh? Some of us will get on YouTube and we'll be studying uh, how to cook this, how to cook that, how to cook that. Have time and also steady your husband. I thank God for today. Thank God for his word. Uh, we bless the name of the Lord for what he has taught us. Let me go back a little and let you understand the command to submit is to all of us. Husband and wife. And that your own part as a wife. Loving your husband is your submission to your husband. And you, the man, your own part of a submission to your wife is the love that you demonstrate. Now we've spoken to the women. That you women, you need to uh, demonstrate wisdom with your lover at home. So that they... The, the, the husband and the whole home will be a place desired for every one of us. And as you, you do this, you do it with a good heart and as a clever woman. The Lord will bless our marriages in Jesus' name. We will stand up at this time and go to the Lord uh, as uh, we pray. I will love, I will love. I will love, I will love, I will love a Christian people, I will love.
God has taught us to love. We will love. Oh yes. We will love. Ah. Oh yes. I will love every. We will love everybody. God has taught us to love. We will. As a wife, I will love, will love. As a wife, I will love. I will love. As a wife, I will love. I will love. 